Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. Have you ever had to change or replace the underlying database of a large system or service? You had to go from a relational database to a different type of relational database, or maybe a relational database to a document or event store. Now there seems to be two groups of people. The first group actually have had to change or replace that underlying database, and because of this, they feel really strongly about abstracting that data access. The second group have never had to replace a, data, a database and never think you likely will, so therefore, they don't concern themselves too much with abstracting that data access. For me, this kind of fits somewhere in the middle. Like most things in software architecture, I really feel this is about managing coupling. And if you do so, this really isn't much of a hot topic at all. Let me explain. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB. The stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event driven microservices. For more on Event Store DB, check out the link in the description. First off, I want to thank Ian Cooper for tweeting this. This actually inspired me to create this video, in which this really is my long form reply. Now, if we're talking about a large system or even a service, I have all these different boxes representing functionality, and all of them have access to the underlying database, all of it. So if we were talking about a relational database, let's say these are the tables, views, et cetera. If you're talking about maybe a document store, these are all the different collections. If you're talking about an event store, maybe these are all the different event streams. But the idea here being, as I wrote it, it's a free for all because the entire service or application has complete access to everything related to the database. In this example, I have no abstraction. Everything is accessing the database directly from whatever native library and whatever platform you're, that you're using. So there's no repository pattern here. There's no maybe no ORM. You're just accessing everything directly. Now the issue here is that if you do change that underlying database, you have to go to all these different boxes that are doing that direct access and potentially rewrite that completely especially if you're going from say something that's like relational to non-relational that can have significant impact in terms of everything that you need to rewrite. This isn't going to be a simple change. So the answer to this generally is to abstract that data access. So all our code is relying on the abstraction and this could be something like a repository, an ORM, if an ORM supports different underlying providers. So we're relying on that and not directly on the database and whatever our native capabilities to interact with that database. So something like the repository pattern, we define all the different database interactions and then we leverage that. So we're leveraging our code and we can hide how that data access occurs within that abstraction of say, for example, a repository. Now, if we need to change that underlying database, we're not changing all our application code like we were before that had all that direct access. Rather, we just have to change that layer of that abstraction. So we end up rewriting all the data access within our repository, or maybe if we were using an ORM, we change the different provider, but we're just changing that layer and we're not changing application code. Now, to me, this isn't about abstract or not abstract the database because you may or may not replace it. To me, this is actually very different when I think about this. I think about this, if there's a lot of application code that needs database access. The thing is, is that in reality, not all these different uh, pieces of the application are created equal or need the same access to the same parts of the database. So again, if you're talking about a relational database, not every one of these blue boxes needs to access the same tables, nor should they. Really what I start thinking about is what are the actual features and the capabilities that our system or service is actually providing. Think about all those things and start segregating them, siloing them, so that you are grouping things that are related together, that they live together, and then they'll access the same relevant data together. Again, not everything needs to access the, the same part of the database, nor should it. One of the things I say a lot is to focus on capabilities. So when you focus on capabilities, then you can think about data ownership of those capabilities. So if we start grouping capabilities to have some high degree of cohesion about what they're about, generally then the data behind them will be cohesive as well. So take everything related together that you're operationally and the capabilities that you're focusing on and put them together. Once you start doing this, you'll realize that you don't need the entire database. So what that looks like is maybe we have a certain set of capabilities and maybe we were using an ORM for it, but it has, again, as I'm describing here in these boxes, that it's accessing only one part of that database. Again, if we're talking about a relational database, this could be just a specific set of tables. 
If I'm using EF here, uh, Entity Framework as the ORM, that means its database context only has a limited number uh, of DB sets involved in it. It's not the entire schema. We're not integrating at the database level here anymore. We're starting to silo things by features, by capabilities, and then the data behind those capabilities. Because of this, you can see that every kind of silo of functionality that I have is defining its own abstraction and data access. So my example right now, they're all using Entity Framework, for example. But again, they have their own portion of the database that they're interacting with. That means that we can change at any point any one of these abstractions of data access. That means that we could switch from EF. Maybe we're going to Dapper. Maybe in one particular part of um, set of functionality, we want quick data access, and we're just going to use ADO.NET directly. Or maybe our old stuff was kind of using the legacy entity framework, and now, now we're migrating to EF Core in one of them. And we can do this one at a time. We can decide by use case of what's relevant to use. So now that we have a set of capabilities that owns kind of that abstraction for data access, and then behind that, the actual data ownership of that schema and data, what's stopping us if we actually need to move a part of the database? Because the reality of it for me in most of the cases is that while a relational database can be the Swiss army knife and you can shove everything in there, when you get a larger system, you start realizing that some of the data doesn't necessarily fit that well in one or the other. Maybe you have some place that actually is more built for a document store. Maybe one part of it is really, you feel like could really leverage from event sourcing. Maybe certain parts of it you wanna keep in a relational database. This allows you to do that. So that means that for example, because we have it this way, we can decide this particular set of functionality, we're gonna move it. We're gonna move it out to event sourcing and we're gonna use event store DB. A portion of this, we're just leaving it as is. We're gonna use our relational database. Another portion of this, we're gonna move it to Postgres because whatever we were using previously, we don't wanna do that. We're moving it out to Postgres for some other reason. This allows you two set of capabilities define how you want data access, and then physically behind that, the data storage that you're using. Now, a key point I need to stress here is I talked about coupling. That's because we had an entire application with a free-for-all accessing our database in the entire schema, all the data, et cetera. Because we've siloed things and we segregated things out, we're not, if we do decide, okay, we're going to move this portion of the database, it's just the actual application code, which is limited, that's actually accessing that part of the database. There's a big difference here between uh, it being a free-for-all and a limited set of capabilities and functionality that are accessing that database. Now, if you're used to working in a monolith where you can just access data from anywhere, that's no longer the case here. So you need to define APIs that return kind of immutable sets of data that you can leverage. But defining that API as an interface, delegates, functions, whatever the case may be, that's returning that mutable data. So instead of accessing things directly, you're defining by that contract, ultimately, that you're exposing from another feature set. To me, this has nothing to do with whether you will or won't change the underlying database, or whether you should or shouldn't abstract data access. To me, this is all about coupling. When I was first showing this, I had a large system or service with a ton of application code that was all coupled to the database directly. If you add some abstraction layer to that, it really doesn't change a ton for me because you still have all this application code that's dependent on a single abstraction layer. You still have all this coupling going to that abstraction layer. I wanna separate things. I want to have cohesive units of capabilities and then per each one of those groupings, those silos, then be able to decide what you want to do in terms of abstraction, in terms of how you want to do, deal with that data access, and then the underlying data behind it. If you want your system to have options and be able to evolve and change over time, as there's different requirements and use cases that come up, you want to focus on cohesion, cohesion of different capabilities that relate to each other. And then overall, just the general amount of coupling that you have in a system, even to a single point like a database. If you want to get access to a Discord server to chat with other developers about software architecture design, make sure to join my YouTube channel or Patreon. Check out the links in the description for more info. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.